You're watching OnFire-TV.com, featuring news, interviews, and entertainment. Broadcasting from Radio On Fire Studios in Baltimore, Maryland, here's your host, Diamond K. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your man Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K Show, OnFire-TV.com, OnFire-TV.com. Make sure you check us out, streaming. 24 7 24 hours a day now um so clean water how important is clean water to you and your family very important of course here in baltimore there's been all of this talk about baltimore treating wastewater from the ohio train derailment who thought of this brilliant idea greed that's what it is greed so in a change of events it looks like the contaminated water from the recent ohio train derailment will not be treated through the baltimore clean harbors plant and i was going to say this today uh but this news broke if the Baltimore uh, County Executive and the mayor of Baltimore City allowed this to happen. Uh, they did, uh, you know, they did not deserve to be reelected. This is a, a serious thing. Charles Hart, the general manager of Clean Harbors, told 11 News uh, WBAL uh, this morning that the company will not take water from the Ohio train derailment site without approval from officials. And it appears that he does not have that approval. I mean, who would want this water here? I mean, it makes literally no sense. Literally no sense. Multiple Baltimore City and Baltimore County officials have expressed their thoughts on the possible treatment in Maryland's system. It is absolutely categorically a potential environmental hazard it, it, it is it is crazy that they were even considering bringing contaminated water to be cleaned here in baltimore and then distributed amongst our water systems are you kidding me so when, when people talk about uh the seriousness of things when people talk about not voting when people talk about not being involved in the process. It is things like this that we have got to pay attention to. Things like this that can affect our health and safety. So the uh, Baltimore County Executive John says that Baltimore County Water is a top priority. And he talked about supporting efforts to prevent the discharge of treated materials into our shared sewer system and are encouraged that Clean Harvest has announced plans to identify alternative solutions to process this waste water. So uh, that is, is something that is important. He continues, our thoughts remain with the people of uh, East Palestine, Ohio, who continue to feel the impacts of this incredible tragedy. We believe that this and other recent incidents at the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant reinforce the importance of our ongoing efforts to modernize Baltimore's region, the water and the, and the wastewater utilities. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the problems. They wanted to bring this potential ha environmental hazard. They wanted to bring it to a plant in here in Baltimore that has had nothing but problems, that is not equipped to handle some just our regular duties. And they want to bring this water, this contaminated mess here to Baltimore. Baltimore City, Baltimore County. So in agreement, the mayor of Baltimore City, Brandon Scott, said, 
Last Friday, I publicly expressed grave concerns with environmental and industrial, uh, just, just the, the, the contracting, the, the clean harvest request to dispose of pre-treated wastewater from Norfolk Southern Railroad's derailment into the Baltimore City wastewater collection system. Need, need I say that it's already a mess? After legal review, the mayor continues, the city's law department has determined that the Department of Public Works has the authority to modify discharge permits in an effort to safeguard publicly owned treatment works, POTW, from interference, pass through, or contamination of treatment byproducts. Lastly, he says, as such, I have uh, directed DPW to modify Clean Harbor's discharge permit to deny the request to discharge process wastewater from the cleanup of the Norfolk Southern Railroad derailment into the city's wastewater system after processing at a uh, Clean Harbor's facility. Clean Harbor's has facilities across the country that may be better positioned to dispose of the treated wastewater, and we urge them to explore those alternatives. I just hope that the powers that be make sure that some mix-up doesn't happen, some kind of uh, uh, you know loophole is not done, and they have, uh, as the uh, Mayor Brandon Scott said, uh, they have facilities across the country. So I don't want them to make some mistake and uh, bring this contaminated water here or treat it somewhere else at, at one of their other locations, clean it, and then bring it back through here. We don't want that crap. We don't need that crap. Um, and uh, as the mayor and the Baltimore uh, County executive said, our thoughts and prayers are definitely you know, with the people of Ohio. But, you know, it, it is just the bringing that stuff here is not a good thing. Water being cleaned through a Baltimore plant for a variety of reasons, it is not a good idea. It is not a good idea. And we must make sure that this does not happen. Wastewater collected from the Ohio derailment site. They wanted to bring that here to Baltimore City and Baltimore County. Yeah, it, it is it is unheard of that quote unquote clean harbors. They wanted to bring an initial uh, an initial uh, uh, known quantity currently loaded in rail cars. They wanted to bring six hundred and seventy five thousand thousand gallons of this contaminated water here. And this is just a month after that uh, that terrible train derailment at the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. So we definitely have to keep our eyes on this. We definitely have to uh, make sure that the people that we have elected to look out for the safety and the well-being of the constituents, the safety and well-being of the residents do just that. Listen to the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. Take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of the show after this. You're watching OnFire-TV.com, featuring news, interviews, and entertainment. Broadcasting from Radio On Fire Studios in Baltimore, Maryland, here's your host, Diamond K. Welcome back, welcome back. You man, Diamond K, and here, of course, the Diamond K Show on Fire-TV.com, RadioOnFire.com, on all social media. I am at 
the Diamond K Show. And as I said, on fire tv.com streaming 24 hours a day. Our streaming channel, very excited about it. So you can check it out right now and anytime, 24 7 on fire tv.com. On fire tv.com. So many of you may know who this guy is. Maryland Court of Appeals has reinstated. Adnan Saeed's murder conviction. The three panel judge, um, the the Maryland Court of Appeals, reinstated this. Now they said the Circuit Court of Baltimore City, they need a do over in the hearing on whether Saeed should be released. Of course, he was accused of killing um, Hay Min Lee back in 1999. This was the subject of the popular podcast, Serial. His first trial ended in a mistrial. The jury convicted him in a second trial, and he had been in jail since February of 1999. The ruling on a challenge filed by Lee's brother claimed that he had not been notified promptly of the fall hearing. It was uh, September 2022, to be exact. The hearing on uh, Saeed's release, he was allowed to testify virtually, but the judges ruled that that was not sufficient. According to the opinion, state law provides victims with the right to prior notice on a motion to vacate and the right to attend the hearing. So uh, Baltimore City's state's attorney's office released a statement following this news. It says that the posture of the case currently is that the appellate court of Maryland has reinstated Mr. Saeed's conviction and sentence. This office is currently conducting a review of the decision. We must allow the appeal process to play itself out. Mr. Saeed and his legal team may file for an appeal to the Maryland Supreme Court, and we must respect their rights to do so. Until those rights are either heard or that request is denied, We are in a holding pattern. Any further comment would be premature at this time. The judge's decision does not take effect immediately. It will take up to 60 days for the parties to decide on their next step. So many people thought that this case was over. Many people thought that this was the end, but, you know, the family is upset. The family has a right and and has. Uh, rights under the law that they are trying to make sure are heeded. Uh, It's just a a sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at The Diamond K Show. Of course, on fire-tv.com. I will be back here tomorrow. More of the show. Need to get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com or hit us up on fire-tv.com. See you guys tomorrow. We'll be right back.